All right, debt ceiling chaos. Let's check it out. All right, welcome to Rob Schmidt tonight. There is an all out campaign to gaslight the American public and vilify the Republican Party as soulless right now as we head into a debt ceiling fight that will really begin tomorrow. The United States will hit its debt ceiling tomorrow when we officially hit $31.381 trillion in debt, an amount so spectacular you can't even wrap your head around it, like the size of the universe. The usual suspects in Congress and the media are telling you that a nation that brings in around maybe $4 trillion a year in tax revenue and holds almost 10 times that much in debt in this moment must be responsible. Uh, Congress is, is going to need to raise the debt limit without conditions. When you're talking about the debt ceiling, raising the debt ceiling, you're talking about meeting spending obligations that Congress and the president have already agreed to. These are not new expenses. It's paying bills that have already been incurred. The United States ought to do that on a routine basis. The United States of America has to honor its outstanding obligations. Me, I get rid of the debt ceiling altogether. <laughs> if Liz Warren's saying it, it's probably not what you want to do. So if we don't continue to subscribe to fiscal insanity, as we have been, so outrageous it's tough for Republicans to even find the words to describe it. If we don't do that, we risk our nation's credibility, they say. You're probably wondering what credibility at this point, and you're right, because fiscally, this country has no credibility. Looking at the last 20 years, you see we started the 2000s on pretty solid footing. Bush's first year in office, actually, we spent $130 billion less than we brought in. Imagine that. After that, despite a strong economy, we still added a few hundred billion in debt annually in these years right here, which is frankly outrageous and fiscally idiotic. And then came 2008, right here. You can see Obama goes in, you get a financial crisis. Tax revenues decline dramatically in subsequent years. We had huge corporate bailouts. Debt goes up dramatically. Our budget was crushed. Uh, it slowly became somewhat more manageable, but then you see the big swing happens over here, right? You get over here and you see COVID-19, the pandemic, 2020, the greatest gift to the fiscally irresponsible uniparty that controls your country. Two years of spending three trillion more than we brought in because, of course, health officials forced us to shut down the entire economy. Politicians, though, in that moment, believe it or not, were in heaven. And then in 2022, with COVID over and a great economy under Joe Biden, we didn't drop back down into numbers like over here, maybe. No, we didn't do that. That's what a responsible government would do. Now, you notice in 2022, which is the last bar on the graph, you've got $1.4 trillion in debt. And in 2023, with COVID way over, we're projected to spend $1.2 trillion more than we bring in in this country. At a time when Joe Biden is running around bragging about how great his economy is, well, a good economy should mean a budget surplus, right? In a good economy, you create a savings account for the tough times, like any responsible American family would do. Not anymore. And don't fool yourselves. Republicans are going along with all of this. Mitch McConnell couldn't wait to herd the rhinos to pass this latest budget with Joe Biden. They're trying to normalize this fiscal lunacy, and it's one of the greatest threats to this country, our unsustainability financially. This year, with a strong economy, your government will add debt equivalent to $9,700 per American household. So they're going to spend every single thing that you and your family send to them, plus another $10,000 that you didn't send to them for every household in the country. And as this happens, Joe Biden goes on stage once a week and has the audacity to call himself a deficit reducer. Here he was just on Monday. And we're making this progress at the same time, reduce the deficit. You know, they're, talking, they're going to talk about big spending Democrats again. Guess what? I reduced the deficit last year, $350 billion. And this year, federal deficit is down $1 trillion plus dollars. Hear me, that's a fact. And there's going to be hundreds of billions reduced over the next decade. 
It's designed to calm the electric. Of course, he lies. That's all he knows how to do is lie. He's a politician. Don't let it calm you down. The country right now is in a fiscal crisis, whether they want to admit it or not. The media is trying to portray those willing to talk about this, those trying to actually correct a huge problem that we have are being painted as extremists. The cards are all stacked against Kevin McCarthy on this kamikaze mission. It, it, will, it, it will not only uh, wreck the economy, it will also uh, it will be the final straw for, for, for people that are holding out hope that the Republican Party finally right. becomes a mainstream party. So this is just a lose-lose for McCarthy. You never hear these people actually address the issue at hand, though. Of course they don't. We just have to pay our bills. If they're not going to talk about the debt now in Washington, when will they? When are we going to arrive at this magical decade when we spend so much less than we bring in? Never is the answer. The White House has made it very clear on this issue, it's continuing fiscal insanity or bust. We're not going to, uh, we're just not going to negotiate uh, about that because, again, it was done under the last president. Yeah, it was done under the last president. But again, as we all know what happened, did Donald Trump want to shut down the economy? Of course not. He hated it. He loathed it with every fiber of his being. And they tried to get rid of him because he was trying to stop what happened to this country, what happened to the world. We eviscerated the world economy. Consequences are still paying for to run away from a virus that we didn't need to. There was a better way to do it. We talk about it all the time. We are now on our way to being 50 or $100 trillion in debt very soon in this country. We spend $400 billion every year just on the interest to hold the debt that we already have. A few thousand dollars from your taxes every year pays for just the interest on the debt we currently have. Think about that. Amount equal to half of our annual defense budget is just our interest payment. And they don't want to talk about it. They just want to keep going down this road. And if you even talk about addressing the issue, they call you a grandma killer. They're threatening to kill millions of jobs and, and 401k plans by trying to hold the debt limit hostage unless they can, again, cut Social Security, cut Medicare, cut Medicaid. They go to that every time. They go to the AARP vote. They know that. Oh, they're going to take away our, our Medicare, our Social Security. Every time. It's amazing to see how low these people will go to pull the wool over your eyes about what's really going on in this country, though. What really threatens this country. On every issue, they do this. They are bankrupting this country and our future. And this is a bipartisan thing. This is both sides. And anyone who tries to stop them, they vilify because they only care about their own political careers and giving kickbacks to all the people who put them in office. Right now, Kevin McCarthy and House Republicans are doing what Senate rhinos refuse to do. They are doing their job. They're trying to prevent this insanity. They're trying to prevent a disaster that is coming in this country. And they need to stick with it this time, no matter how ugly it gets. Social Security and Medicare adjustments are nothing to compare to what happens and what's coming if we don't face this disaster head on. All right, Monica Crowley joins us tonight. Good to have you back on. You know, more than anything, I think our national debt in this country is the perfect demonstration of the failures of our government and just how embarrassing it can be. Um, your, your thoughts as we get ready for another debt ceiling fight. Yeah, here we go again, Rob, right? It always seems that our nation's leaders, particularly on the Democratic side, want to push these fights until the very last minute. Their hair is always on fire, and then they're forced to raise the debt ceiling without making any spending cuts. To Kevin McCarthy's great credit, he came in as speaker yep. and said, we're not going to do business as usual anymore when it comes to government spending. It's completely out of control. We've got to rein it in. So what he has proposed is starting talks now as we head into 
We could hit the debt ceiling tomorrow, but the Treasury Department has some extraordinary measures that they can use to inject liquidity into the economy to get us into, say, June, before we really hit the wall. And McCarthy has said, let's start those conversations right now so we're not running around with our hair on fire. But that's not what most of our nation leaders want. They want that kind of political drama in order to paint the other side as, as some sort of villain. But look, I think that McCarthy and the Republicans are 100 percent right. We cannot go on like this. Thirty one trillion dollars in debt. The spending needs to stop. Yeah. So negotiations and, need to begin in order to begin that process. And, and, and the, fa the fact that there's just absolutely no way to cut any of the spending in this country. I mean, the moment you start talking about it, they, they, they say that you're trying to take benefits away from people that have, you know, earned them, that have paid into these, you know, Social Security, Medicare. Uh, they immediately go after that. I mean, there's, there's no way to change this disaster, uh, the, 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 this disaster course that we're on. There's no, way, there's no way to move away from it without, I guess, just dramatically raising taxes, which would throw us into probably a, a depression. Yeah, that doesn't work, raising taxes. You can only get X number of dollars yeah. in terms of revenue, even if you were to extort 100% of every billionaire's income and all of their assets, you would fund like five minutes of the federal government. Right. No, we need more long-standing, long-term structural reforms, particularly on the entitlement programs. And that does include Social Security, uh, Medicare, Medicaid, and other things that the Democrats simply don't want to touch. The Republicans argue is, look, we can't go on this way. It's not sustainable. These programs are going to implode on themselves, and then nobody will be able to get any benefits right. unless we reform it now. We've been talking about this for, what, 20, 30 years about reforming these programs, and yet nothing is done. It's all considered the third rail. Yeah. But sooner rather than later, Rob, the hard and fast laws of economics are going to force everybody's hand. And so better to handle it now while you still have some control over these things and can deliver a soft landing rather than later when you've completely lost control when you have a disaster. and God knows what would happen to the programs and the benefits. Yeah, the, debt's, the debt's coming up on $32 trillion. There are those people out there like Robert Reich, who was Clinton's, you know, labor secretary, uh, who say that they, they really believe this, that we can just, why, why is there a debt ceiling at all? We, we shouldn't have any kind of a ceiling. Just, and I, and I guess it's just, let's just run it up as, as, as high as we want, which would send us to 60, 80, 100 trillion dollars in debt. They, they, they think there's no consequence for that. Are, are they wrong to believe that? I mean, there are people out there that think it doesn't matter how much debt this country has. Well, there are people, and it's actually something called modern monetary theory, right. or MMT, and the left is in love with it because it argues that you can just print endless amounts of money, run up the debt to, to uh, infinity and beyond, and there will be no consequences. Well, of course there are going to be consequences. This is just another fraudulent economic theory on the part of the left that they use as a pretext to continue spending willy-nilly. Look, we, the laws of economics are hard and fast, and at some point you are going to hit the wall. Last year alone, in 2022, Rob, the government spent nearly $400 billion just in interest on the just debt, on the just to service yeah. the debt. So you can imagine if interest rates continue to rise, it is going to eat up all of the revenue that is coming into the government just to service the debt. That right. is going to crowd out spending on everything else, including the military, homeland security, um, but also the left's beloved programs on education or the environment. Yeah. Yeah. There is going to be no money left. And their counter argument is, well, just keep printing money. Well, if you do that, then the inflation of the Weimar Republic is going to look like yep. child's play compared to what we're going to be facing here. Just unreal. Unreal. The, the, the lack of logic in all of this is scary, and, and nobody wants to face what needs to be faced. Uh, and that's really scary. Monica Crowley, thank you so much. Good to see you. Always a pleasure, Rob. Thanks. Hey guys, it's Rob Carson. Your retirement funds are being threatened with even more losses from record inflation, recession, and skyrocketing interest rates. Fortunately, the highly trained specialists at American Hartford Gold can show you how to protect your savings and retirement accounts by diversifying your portfolio with physical gold and silver. If you call them right now, it's a special offer. They will give you a free gold coin on your first qualifying order, so don't wait. Call 866-935-4309. That's 866-935-4309 or text Newsmax to 65532. That's Newsmax to 65532.